Okay, so next we have issues with bias um, as you're analyzing data. And this goes to the question of um, whether or not data itself, just raw data in a spreadsheet, is that biased? Does that have systematic issues? Can data be racist um, or sexist or ableist or anything that is discriminatory? Um, and I would argue that yes, it can. And there are a whole bunch of examples of it causing this. And so one fun example is this startup here called Predictim. Um, its whole goal was to flag or, or to basically create, it was Uber for, um, for babysitters. So if you wanted a babysitter, you could use an app and it would match you with the most appropriate person to babysit your family based on your characteristics and their characteristics. And to help with that matching system, the Predictim algorithm would flag risky babysitters. Um, and so this is essentially a regression model where it just has a list of all of their babysitters, has columns for each of the each of the babysitters, and it, it predicts how risky they are going to be. That's the outcome based on a whole bunch of different coefficients that they stick in, um, which seems pretty um, unbiased, super objective. You're just plugging stuff into a formula. It spits out a risk score. So this journalist decided to try it um, to see if it worked. And what they found was that it, the algorithm was basically racist. It was assigning um, black potential babysitters as highly risky and disrespectful. Um, and it was assigning white people um, less risk and very respectful. Um, and so what, what this journalist does, if you read the article, um, again, if you press P, um, you can see the article link. Um, is this journalist talks to them and says, like, you do not have a do racism button on your program's dashboard. Um, they're not purposely building in you know, racism here. But what they do is they have systemic bias in there where the algorithm is trained on a specific subset of people and humans are going through and saying, this person looks disrespectful. This person looks respectful. This person's language is disrespectful. This person's language is respectful. And they're, they're training this, this regression model, basically, on human um, biases. And so if you look at this, this is um, kind of uh, one of the babysitters here, a uh, black woman, um, where she had very low risk for bullying and harassment, but she had moderate risk for disrespectful attitude. And that was based entirely on her Twitter feed. Um, but then the journalist was able to do other experiments and find a white person with a very similar Twitter feed with similar la similar language, but they were marked as fine and respectful. Um, so there were systemic and systematic biases built into the algorithm itself and into the data collection itself that then caused bad kind of racially disparate outcomes. Um, there's a whole world of research about this. There's these three books that are really good overviews of, of the problem here. This idea of algorithms of oppression or automating inequality or data feminism here. Basically, they all argue that every single algorithm out there, Google's search rankings, um, Twitter's algorithm for seeing which posts come first, Facebook's algorithm, um, Amazon's pricing algorithm, all of these things um, are biased towards white males. Um, and they, they exclude people who are not white males. Um, which then causes all sorts of problems when you're analyzing data. If you're trying to analyze causal effects of some social program, you need to pay attention to this. Um, often, if you're doing some sort of analysis, um, there's going to be inherent sexism. This is especially the case with medical research. Lots of medical trials, um, randomized control trials that should be great, everybody's happy with it, are only tested on men. Um, especially back in like the 70s and 80s. So trials for like ibuprofen and Tylenol and stuff um, excluded women from trials um, because they did. And so we have all sorts of evidence about what medicines work, but there are systemic issues behind those trials, um, which causes all sorts of issues. Um, for instance, there's um, it's very popular nowadays to use hiring algorithms, where if you have 100 applicants for a job, you can stick the resumes into some program. It'll extract specific elements from the resumes and basically create a data set with columns in it that says like years of experience, um, school they went to, other things like that. Um, and then it calculates a score for each person about hireability. Um, and so in one algorithm that Amazon was thinking about using, 
um, what they found, uh, there was a lawsuit because this algorithm was not recommending any buddy who wasn't a white male to be hired. It was basically excluding um, black men and women and white women. Um, and so what they found through this lawsuit was the two factors that were most indicative of job performance was whether somebody's name was Jared and whether they played high school lacrosse. So if those two columns were true in the data set, then they were highly likely to be successful. That does not mean that the high school lacrosse Jareds are the best employees. It means the data was trained on white males um, from New England, um, where Jared is a very common name and people play lacrosse to be able to get into elite colleges. Um, so the algorithm was basically trying to find elite Jareds, and that was what it was trained to do. Even though it, it was objective, it's just using spreadsheets, it's still kind of generating that bias in its predictions. Um, this happens with public policy as well, with other like super negative consequences. Um, so there's an algorithm that lots of judicial systems use called Compass um, that judges use to determine how high to set bail for specific um, um, defendants. And so as people come to the court, um, basically their information gets plugged into an algorithm um, the severity of, severity of their crime, their family background, um, their income, years of education, a whole bunch of other things that are all columns in a data set, and it gets fed into a model, and then that model spits out a number that says how high of a flight risk they are um, and how high bail should be set. And, not surprisingly, what this algorithm does is it basically labels most black offenders as high risk and white offenders as low risk, and so then it assigns black offenders with really high bail or denies them bail and gives white offenders very low bail. Um, and so basically it demonizes black offenders while giving white criminals the benefit of the doubt. Um, it, is a, it is an objective algorithm with just numbers. That's all that's getting fed into it is just numbers. But it is being like the numbers themselves came from a, uh, discriminatory practices and um, led to more discriminatory outcomes and this is going to keep self-perpetuating. Um, there have been ballot initiatives over the past few years to ban the use of algorithmic justice like this in different cities. Um, lots of progressive district attorneys are trying to get rid of this um, because it's again automating inequality and automating bias and you don't necessarily want that. Um, Facebook has run into issues with this. Um, one of the reasons Facebook is so rich is not because um, it's a fun place to um, share information. It's because they have so much private information about every single user that you can target ads to very specific subsets of the population. So if you want to, if you have a nonprofit and you want to target people who are between 18 and 23 who live in northern Atlanta, who have a college degree, who are interested in social justice issues, you can find a sliver of that using Facebook's ad system and only advertise to those people. And so that's like a, a really cool way of kind of narrowing in on a specific subset of the population. Um, what Facebook was found to be doing back in 2016 was they had a race button um, enabled in their um, in their their ad targeting system. So even though it is illegal to discriminate um, housing on the basis of race, um, it was possible as a landlord to show up to Facebook and not advertise to Black and Latino people and only advertise to white people. Um, so Facebook got in trouble for that. There was a whole lawsuit from the Department of Housing and Urban Development where they said, you can't do this, you are discriminating. And so Facebook took that option out. So there's no longer a race button, um, but you can use other things to target specific, um, to, to try to omit specific races without using a race button. Um, and so that's still an issue. It is entirely possible to discriminate using Facebook ads um, even though you don't have a race button, um, which again causes all sorts of issues in society. Um, the last example of bias here is this Apple Card example that you saw in your readings, um, where Apple Card, if you want to sign up for one of those using your iPhone, um, it looks at your credit history and then gives you a specific um, interest rate based on your credit history. 
And so what happened with um, the, the article or the, the tweet thread that you looked at and in the subsequent article is that it gave um, this guy um, a really low rate and it gave his wife a much higher rate because she didn't have as strong of a, a credit score because they're married, um, but also because systemically it gave men a lower credit score or a lower um, interest rate than women just because the algorithm said to. Um, kind of like the, the bail system, but for credit cards. And that's bad. And so Apple had to go back and fix this and, and change it. Um, but it, it can lead to bad outcomes um, that discriminate against people. And so you don't want to do that. So in order to do this, you need to make sure that your sample is representative. Um, you Just because you have numbers in a spreadsheet does not mean it represents society. And it does not mean that it is unbiased and not racist and not sexist. Um, there can be issues with just the columns in your data set. Um, you also need to think about theory. This is especially important with trying to find causal inference. One of the problems with um, these this automated bias stuff that we've been talking about is most of these algorithms that are being used to guess if you're going to escape bail or be a flight risk or if you're going to purchase a specific thing is they don't really have a theory. They just collect as many columns as they can about somebody. They throw them all into a regression model and then they see which ones are predictive or not. And then they kind of rely on those. There's no theory at all behind it. They just see what sticks. Um, and so if you're doing that, Often you'll get weird things like a Jared who played high school lacrosse is going to be your best employee. There's no theory in the world that says that Jared lacrosse players are going to be very effective employees. That only happened because there was no theory behind it. And so when you're doing this causal inference stuff, make sure you have a well-specified DAG and you're not just throwing stuff at your outcome to see what happens um, because that can lead you down dangerous paths. And then finally, remember that no data, no models, no algorithms, none of this stuff is neutral. Um, it all has bias built into it from the humans that collect it. Um, even if you, you just have some objective data set that the World Bank provides or that um, JPOW provides and you get the replication data, somebody collected that data. Somebody chose which columns to measure. Um, and how to analyze those things. And that can build bias into the actual results and to the data set itself. So pay attention to that. Um, remember that you're working with data about people and you don't want to kind of feed into this, this automated inequality and this um, um, kind of racial and, and sexist bias that can come from just using data. So be careful about that. Um, you can do a few things very feebly to fight against these algorithms that are tracking you. Um, if you're using a web browser, you can use something called an incognito window or a private window. Um, this makes it so cookies, um, or, which are pieces of information that let websites track you across the internet, um, it doesn't keep cookies, which means if you go search for something on Amazon and you're looking for like a specific book, um, if you're using your regular browser, um, if you search for something on Amazon, it's very likely that Facebook will then sell that search query to Amazon. Or if you're searching on Amazon, it's likely that Amazon will sell that search query to Facebook. And then when you go to Facebook, um, they'll advertise the same book to you or something similar. Um, you see this when you're doing, if, if you're comparison shopping, like a new blender or something, you will get ads on Google and Facebook and Instagram and Amazon for blenders for like weeks because they all sell, buy and sell information behind the scenes. Um, if you use an incognito window, that helps prevent that cross site um, transfer. It's really inconvenient because you always have to log in and log out. Um, it doesn't keep login information, um, but it's something you can do. Um, also, all of these companies have, uh, they're required by law to let you choose um, and set some of your ad preferences. Um, this is the, the URL for Google. If you go to adsettings.google.com, it will basically show you a list of your interests as determined by Google um, based on your search history. And so it will try to guess who you are um, and what things you might be interested in. And it's really fascinating to look there. Sometimes it'll give you like 
favorite musician suggestions and it'll guess your age and it'll guess your gender and it'll guess your location and it'll guess a whole bunch of stuff. Um, you can control that. Um, you can um, adjust things there. You can also exclude things. So if you don't want it advertising to you based on age, you can turn off the age checkbox. Um, Facebook and Twitter and Instagram also all have something similar. So you can go there and kind of tinker with the algorithm about you. Um, but again, that's just personally to you. That doesn't fix algorithmic bias for the whole world. It's just you. Um, so it makes kind of a better, more pleasant experience for yourself. But systemically, there are serious issues. So bias is a serious thing you need to consider as you're doing this type of analysis with R. Um, even if you're doing something simple like um, randomized control trials, you still need to think about the, the provenance of the data and who's represented in the data and how they're represented.